second speaker, uh, we have uh, Jack Tone Arogo. Yes, sir. Uh, he's from uh, Virginia Tech. He's in the Biological Systems Engineering Department. And his area of expertise and area of work is in animal manure management, uh, nutrient, and energy recovery. With that, okay. Jack Tone. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, what I'm going to talk about, I see many faces that I know in the room, and many faces that I see know much about what I'm going to talk about than I should really talk about. So, forget about my title, what I'm going to talk about is basically how do we create the design of Manoa. That is really, you know, my thing is creating the you know, design of Manoa. Uh, so we've been working on uh, you know this theme using design and manure for uh, for a while now, actually almost ten years. And uh, what we really want to really look at is use the known ways of uh, capturing phosphorus or you know, nutrients from manure, and you know this, this, this you know operating our systems like that. You know depending on the need of your application then you make or your system to produce exactly that. So you make it to fit uh, you know, your objective. We've been doing that and I'm going to show you examples here as we move along. Um, I'm not going to go over uh, you know, the methods to capture the manure, the physical, chemical, uh, you know, biological and combinations of both. We use all of those in our application. Uh, what I'm going to focus on today is really going to be, you know, using, uh, you know, chemicals. And um, we do the chemicals, you know, not, uh, uh, you know, uh, very familiar to those who work in this area, aluminum-based, uh, iron-based, calcium, and in some cases, you know, uh, you know polymers. Uh, while you are making, uh, going to do, uh, use your chemicals or uh, trying to design, a, you know, use your design of manure, you really need to know where you're going to add your chemicals because your chemical demand or need is going to be dictated by the characteristics of the manure that you treat. The process is, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. You have to select your chemical, you have to, uh, know you know how much of it uh, you know you really want to add and the process is you know very very standard i'm trying to look for the pointer just pointer. the red red button there just below oh, the middle oh, yep right in the middle yeah so you need to you know figure out you have to do you know some tests a little bit to figure out the dose that that you you need then once you figure that out then uh, you simply you know apply it um, we have done that. What I want to share with you is, uh, you know, some crazy idea that we thought, you know, would not work, but uh, actually it worked pretty well. So we decided that we were going, we were having phosphorus issues. So we went and, uh, you know, tried this using chemical separation on a 600,000 gallon tank. And I'm going to show you some of those slides. And then we even tried to push that further because after, you know, our success with the first one, uh, to uh, do other, other things. So this is the tank, this is 600, this is the Virginia Tech dairy. Uh, that's the dairy barn, this is the separator, this is tank one, tank two, and tank three. So generally, you know, that's the way the manure will flow from the barn to here, there, over here, tank two, then tank three, and then it's flushed <coughs> back again. So what we did with this 600,000 gallon tank, that's what it looked like. Mix it about for 30 minutes before we apply the chemical. Uh, brought chemical in bulk, uh, uh, you know, containers. You can see we chose aluminum chloride simply because uh, of, uh, uh, I think at that time there were concerns. This is closer to the, our football stadium. So uh, there were certain issues with, 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 with you know, fouling the, the, the air near the football stadium. So uh, for the 600,000 gallon tank, we figured we needed about uh, 1,200 gallons of, um, of, of aluminum chloride and about 85 uh, you know, gallons of uh, uh, the superfloc uh, uh, polymer. Uh, we had to discharge this directly into the manure tank as we were mixing it. Uh, that's the, 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 the aluminum chloride and uh, you know being discharged and then uh, the, um, the 
polymer was a little more of a challenge. If you have worked with polymers, you will know how hard it is to you know, deploy them into liquid. So we tried all sorts of, of ways and then we just decided to dump them. <laughs> yes, did Yeah, it's really good. It's hardly really hard to work with. So continued mixing it for a while using a pump TO, PTO uh, driven uh, pump of a tractor. Uh, mixing at two levels, one at the surface and then about uh, you know six feet above the above the bottom of the tank. These are about you know twelve feet uh, uh, you know deep tanks. Uh, let the material uh, kind of after you know mixing, let things you know react and then settle. Uh, Twenty-four hours later, you know, send your grad students to go and uh, kind of measure the depth and. Uh, uh, you know, collect some samples, and uh, if you really look uh, on the surface, yes, uh, you, you were seeing scum, you know, earlier, but then it was just about an inch and a half, you know, at the top. So when all that is said and done, this is really, you know, what you see. Perhaps, you know, the lighting is not really giving you the color uh, differentiation very well, but uh, it's, it's, the slide is totally different from night and day. The nutrient partitioning, it's also, uh, you know, you get a whole lot more in, uh, in the sludge than you're getting in the, uh, the supernet. Uh, we've heard about, uh, you know, 60% of you know, material in, in the supernet and then 40% of the material in the tank. Uh, one of the reasons we were doing, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, our lands are really, you know, phosphorus limited around campus, so we needed to move this away from campus about five miles. So uh, we did, this was a trial thing and it worked and we've been practicing it since, uh, uh, you know, the time that this worked. So after uh, doing the solid, applica uh, solid application, yes, we loaded those and if you can see, these are trucks moving on the roadways with other trucks then, you know, applied and after you know all is said and done we have a clean pit and we can continue with our business again ah we were so excited we moved from uh, the five six hundred thousand to now one and a half million gallon tank and it, it, it was fun this one <laughs> we're not going to see a whole lot of it but uh, you know we really believed in uh, uh, trying to, you know, get all the slides at the bottom, take them, and it worked for us, and we believe in the, uh, the design of Noah, to the extent that we then said, okay, so it works for us in patch, then what should we be doing uh, uh, if we don't have, want, to, want, want to wait, uh, you know, for a very long time, you know, let the material accumulate, come one time, you know, down, and, uh, you know, you know, move uh, the manure off the, the, uh, off the, off the off, out, out of off the farm. So uh, we wanted to implement then, uh, you know, peer removal in a continuous um, uh, uh, operation mode. And not just for the Virginia Tech farm, but some of the small farms we also have uh, in, in, in our local communities in Virginia. Uh, those of you who are familiar with that, you know, we have some Mennonite farmers who have about, uh, you know, 70 animals per, <coughs> per, per, per herd. And uh, our soils, uh, the, the areas that they are, they are, are really being, uh, you know, challenged by uh, of, you know, a lot of pee. So, said, okay, can we test, uh, you know, come up with, uh, and we're still coming up with it, and that's what I'm going to get to here. Uh, ways that uh, you know can be helpful to us, and uh, yes, uh, we have been trying. Uh, then, how can we make uh, uh, this key recovery, you know, work for material that's about five percent, you know, total solids? The one thing that we discovered or realized earlier is that you know, for chemicals to be more effective you really need to be below about 2% you know, total solids. So you really need to dilute. But where do you get your dilution water? And that's the crook of my presentation today. 
So we said, okay, we're looking into the future. There's going to be, um, uh, you know, AD processes perhaps, you know, in being installed. And the reason we are looking for the AD effluent is uh, so that we have anything that goes through, or most of the material that goes through uh, AD processing. You know, you're sure you'll be having some homogeneous material that uh, you can always, you know, count on. At least there will be some uniformity in the material that you're dealing with. So those are the characteristics of the material that we were dealing with. So we conducted a series of um, uh, uh, chemical, uh, uh, we conducted a series of chemical dosing and dilutions, you know, to figure out which uh, uh, chemical would work, you know, best, you know, for us. Uh, in in this, this process, we were not looking at polymers. We were only looking at uh, the aluminum and iron salt. And we chose uh, aluminum uh, salt because uh, it performed, it was a whole lot, the material that was coming out as a result was uh, of, of, of the treatment. Uh, for the, uh, the manures we were handling, aluminum was giving us a better product than, uh, uh, than, 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 uh, than, 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 than iron. Iron was a lot of foam, uh, it look, really looks slimy, but again, not going to get into the you know, chemistry of that. So we also figured out that um, uh, our best uh, dilution, and this was really consistent even with uh, our previous, you know, batch scale, our you know, full scale tests, that uh, you know, yes, using or working at around you know two percent, we were using, uh, we were getting really, really, you know, good removals. Uh, so, but the biggest challenge for those who work with manure, you know, you don't want to add water to manure. That's increasing your storage. You want to show me the time? Oh, okay. you're fine. Oh, cool. <laughs> so. We don't want to add manure. <coughs> we don't want to add liquid to, to, to our manure. So we said, okay, we're going to seed uh, the first part. We're going to get water and then uh, you know do our dilution. But for the subsequent ones, we want to get uh, you know use uh, you know our process of liquid to come back and uh, you know do our dilution and continue with our separation. So we've done lots of this um, uh, uh, you know recycling of um, you know our supernet and we did this actually eight times to see and you know our goal was how much can you get how much supernet can you get and is it even enough to you know, do dilution that's number one and then number two what is uh, what's the quality of that supernet that you're going to, you're getting uh, to kind of re, um, uh, for, for, for your, your dilution so we did all sorts of tests and you know, started like this is uh, you know, our very first one, the very first test, and then we take the supernet and then you know, dilute the next patch. This is our eighth trial. This is a control over here which does not have any, 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 any chemical at all. You see there is no, no separation or no supernet you know, there to speak of. So about, we were able to get, you know, of, as we, when we used uh, uh, 600 milligrams uh, per liter of, of aluminum, 600 milligrams of aluminum, you know, per liter in our dosage, we were able to get about, uh, you know, 50% of, you know, very good supernet material to use. Um, the total solids uh, that I'm, going, I'm showing you here, basically is we're looking at the supernet and then in the sludge. So uh, this is our first cycle. This is uh, with clean water. Then uh, you can see the total solids, uh, you know, kind of increasing as you go with your cycle. But um, uh, there uh, is not really a whole lot uh, with uh, you know going the slide. You can see we are very con we are consistently uh, you know up in you know, four um, percent. The same thing, I think one was, yeah, this is using aluminum sulfate, and this is uh, using um, aluminum, uh, <coughs> aluminum chloride. Uh, the reason I'm showing this is just uh, to show, because we are interested in using the, the supernet, is how much solid is there in the supernet that uh, you're going to reintroduce uh, uh, to, your, uh, to, your, to your material. 
uh, what we were able to see is that if when we used 600 milligrams per liter, of course we were removing about 95% of our you know, total phosphorus from the liquid. Now, do we really need to remove 95%? That's where the designer comes. So if you only want to remove, uh, uh, say, 60%, then you'll have to dose accordingly to get your 60%. If you want to use, remove 100, then you have to push your chemicals to remove you know, your 100. So the target is always moving depending on your need. Now, uh, the other thing that I really need to mention here, yes, I don't have the aluminum, uh, uh, the partitioning of aluminum. 10% of the aluminum that uh, uh, we put in actually was uh, is the residual is seen in the in the supernet, and 90% of the aluminum is associated with the sludge. And uh, here we are. This is my you know conceptual diagram of how we intend to uh, you know present this uh, or put this over in our farms. And uh, we are in the process of, uh, you know, seeking, uh, you know, funds to go and actually implement this uh, on, on a farm. <coughs> so we wanted to try this on a flatbed trailer so that we could move it from place to place, but, uh, you know, didn't quite work right. And uh, I will take questions with uh, that. Do we have any questions for Jack Cohn? Any questions? Thank you, John. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's fine, yeah. No. What the polymer do you, what, what the polymer, do you think <coughs> would have seen any increased separation if you would have kind of compared it with the water first? Yes, totally, yes. And uh, there, there is, um, uh, in, in our lab studies, where we could really control uh, 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 the mixing and we were able to handle it really well, uh, the, 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 the separation was really awesome. Yes. Any other questions? No. No? Let's give Jack Hill a hand. Thank you.